congregation, please stand. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know my Redeemer liveth, and that the earth shall stand in the latter day upon the earth, and though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. Whom shall I see for myself? And mine eyes shall behold, and not another. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord had taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, make me to know my end and the number of my days, that I may be certified how long I have to live. Behold, thou hast made my days as it were a span long, and mine age is even as nothing in respect of thee. And verily, every man living is altogether vanity. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday, seeing that is past as a watch in the night. The days of our age are three score years and ten. And though men be so strong that they could come to four score years, yet is their strength then but labor and sorrow, and we are gone. Let us pray at this time. Our merciful Father, we come before you, giving you thanks for the life of Graham or Graham Nurse. Father, this afternoon, we pray, O oh God, that you will comfort those who are mourning at this time. We ask that your presence will be in this place, their Father. That the messages and the songs and the, and, the, and the words of encouragement, their Father, will all point to you, author and finisher of our faith, maker of heaven and earth, and more importantly, creator of our lives. Father, I pray that you will strengthen the family and those who are here. And that may your grace extend towards them, not only for today, but for the rest of their lives, knowing that you are their comforter and friend. Lord, bless them and bless all of us this evening. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Let me first of all extend deepest regret and sincerest condolences to the family of Graham Nurse. I pray and trust that God will be your portion. He will be your strength. He will be your, your, your comforter at this time. At this time, I will invite sister natasha brooms who will lead us in the first hymn to god be the glory please remain standing for this song a blessed good evening to everyone the first verse of this song says to god be the glory great things he has done 
So loved he the world that he gave us his son to yield his life and atonement for sin and open the life gates that all may go in. To God be the glory.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. And we look forward to hearing his voice when we all shall gather in that beautiful place that is called heaven. And I know there's a reward waiting for each and every one of us. But there's a condition we have to serve the Lord. Keep his commandments, as the word says, for this is the whole duty of man. At this time, we want to continue in our service. You will remain standing um, for the scripture reading that will be re um, read from the book of Revelation, chapter 21, from verses 1 to 7. And this will be read by Kimberly Ford. And after she leaves, you will be allowed to sit. And then the following voice you will hear is from Jane Small, who will share a poem. So at this time, we invite Kimberly Ford to read the scripture, Revelation 21, from verses 1 to 7. chapter 21 verses 1 to 7. Okay. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of water of life freely. And he that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he will shall be my son. Thank you. Please be seated. Good afternoon. I wish to extend my deepest condolences to you, the family and friends of the deceased. And on behalf of the family, I'm just going to read this poem before I sing. It is entitled, Poem of Life. Life is but a strong place, a pause in what's to be, a resting place along the road to sweet eternity. We all have different journeys, different paths along the way. We all were meant to learn some things, but never meant to stay. Our destination is a place far greater than we know. For some, the journey is quicker. For some, the journey is slow. And when the journey finally ends, we will claim a great reward and find everlasting peace together with the Lord. Wonder, 
Amen. Thank you, Sister Jane, for the poem and your ministry in song. We do indeed give God thanks for he is great and he is a great God indeed. Amen. Amen. I'm sure you all can agree with me on that. We want to continue in this service as we sing the hymn, Blessed Assurance. You can remain seated for this song. I will invite Sister Natasha to come and lead us in this song, Blessed Assurance. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Blessed assurance.
majority of songs we will sing will be for our, the collection of our offering, and the offering is going to the repairs of our church's roof. I'll ask you to stand at this time. I've got my mind made up, and I won't turn back, because I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up, and I won't turn back. Because I want to see my Jesus someday.
Please be seated. Reading from the scriptures from the book of John, chapter 14, from verses 1 to 4. The Bible says, Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also, and that you know the way I am going. When Jesus made this um, very famous um, passage of scripture, when he made this comment, he was speaking at the time to the disciples whose hearts were troubled. They were agitated. Um, disturbed, there was a sense of uneasiness at that time. And so Jesus, knowing that they have been troubled, perhaps by his um, mentioning to them that he will be leaving them, he will die, and so they would have felt the pain and the agony of him saying so. And so, he begins this, uh, let's put it in this way, this, this appeal he's making with a command not to, to, telling them not to be troubled any longer. Because at that time, there had been so much that has been happening at that time. That their, heart, that their hearts were, it was filled with a mixture of, 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 of thoughts and um, various emotions as Christ was revealing to them that, hey, I will not be with you, you know, any, any while longer. Of course, there would have been some shame due um, to their earlier proud argument because just in some scriptures before they were arguing with each other and Christ had to rebuke them and after he rebuked them he washed their feet showing humility and urging them to show humility and not pride because humility is a key to the greatness in God's kingdom. And of course, Jesus, in this passage, as he said, let not your hearts be troubled, he offers his disciples three assurances that will put their uneasiness and put their hearts at rest and this is a message I believe that the family would appreciate because the message resonates with you today, family members. There are three things that will ease your distress, that will ease your pain, that will ease your sorrow at this time. The first source of comfort that Jesus offered them was that he told them believe in God and also believe in me. And the disciples had been with Jesus for over just over two years basically. Um, they heard of his teachings and they have seen um, <clears throat> the multiple miracles um, that he performed, um, proving his authority that he is indeed God, that he had authority over nature, that he had authority 
over miracle, um, demons and sickness and death. And the disciples understood his claim to be the son of God, to be God's son. Deity in, in human flesh, God with us, God in human flesh. They understood that. And they recognized that Jesus was sinless. And that even Jesus' enemies could not bring a, little, a, 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 a charge against him. And these disciples already heard that he can forgive sins and teach the way of God with all authority because he had the power to so do. And so they were in agreement with Peter's confession in Matthew chapter 16 that Jesus was the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And so with Christ telling them to believe in me, with all of this, all of that, what I have told you, it brings comfort to them because they know that in him there is the source of comfort. There is also the source of power from which they can draw from. And these men were troubled in heart. But they couldn't, they, 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 they couldn't take comfort in the words of Christ because they were sure about everything that Jesus had said. And everything that Jesus had done about the time, at the time. You know, there's, it's like some friend that you have. You know, you get those phone calls sometimes, or you get a message or a card or something, or, 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 or as I said, a call from someone who you were looking forward to hear from. You had a bad day. And this one phone call, or this one message just change the perspective of your whole day. You all ever had that experience? That was the kind of experience these disciples had with Jesus. That from the moment he gave them this assurance, they were comforted. They were at peace. They did not feel... Um, disturbed in their spirits at the time. And so when Jesus tells you, brothers and sisters, friends and relatives, let not your hearts be troubled. I want you to believe it. Because the God we serve is a God who is in control of our life and and in this life, he brought, he, he, he brought promises for us. He said that he will never leave nor forsake us. He said, he said, he said, come on to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. In him, you can find rest. Not the rest where... <laughs> I'm talking about where you lie down in your bed and take a nap. That's not the rest I'm talking about. I'm talking about in him, you will find peace in your soul in the midst of turmoil. In the midst of difficult circumstances. He has given you this assurance that once you come to me, that once you believe in me, you will find peace you will find comfort for your souls. Jesus said he will comfort you. And rest assured, that's his promise, that's his word. In John 14, 27, he said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Because what the world is offering is a superficial artificial type of security just yesterday we had a shooting at Browns Beach 
There was also a shooting in St. John's last night. As a matter of fact, it was a carjacking. You see where Barbados reach? And you come to press conferences after press conferences, and you hear the government and the police telling you, we have a handle on crime. <laughs> yeah, right. You, we have a handle on crime. But yet, we are seeing people being cut down daily. How many more people had passed on after the, these promises? So they say that we will put scanners in the port. We will give the police more um, um, uh, equipment. Thank you. To, to, to deal with the whole scourge of crime. And yet still, we are seeing the proliferation of guns and, and, and ammunition coming in into what is a porous Barbados. That is the kind of superficial piece I'm talking about. Governments say one thing, and yet you are, the result is you are seeing something else. But when Jesus said, I give you peace, Tell yourself, brothers and sisters, it is not a peace that the government offers. It is not a peace that politicians promise. It is a peace, as the Bible says, that passes all human understanding. It is a peace that keeps you sane in the middle of madness. It is the peace that, brothers and sisters, that keeps you protected when you feel your life and your being is threatened and Christ is offering this peace to us he said do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid in Isaiah we are reminded he said do not fear for I have redeemed you Christ said I have called you by your name and that's the beauty about it you know God knows your name and he will call you by your name and say, peace be unto you. He will call you by name. And he said, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. In other words, when, when let's say, a, a, a storm of problems come or a flood of problems come, God is not going to let you drown in them. He's going to protect you, brothers and sisters. He will be your life, your life raft, as we say in Trinidad, or, 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 um, or that, um, that life boy um, that will keep you um, protected. He will keep you afloat in your circumstances. He said, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. So, brothers and sisters, he is not only encouraging us to believe in him, that's not the only assurance he's given us, but the other assurance he's given us is that he said he is preparing a place for us. That's the other assurance. That's the second source of comfort. Because with all the things that are happening in this world, all the things, bad things, and, and now we are seeing the emergence of climate, ch climate change and the threat that is, a, that is upon this region. Let me put this into context for you. If in the next 10 years, we don't bring those degrees down that the Prime Minister was talking about, if we don't get it to 1.5 degrees, listen to me, the Caribbean will become extinct. It will go underwater because the sea levels will rise and it will be destroyed. All of the Caribbean. Or at least those that are below sea level. That's the threat we are facing. But the thing is, it's a temporary world we are living in. We are not here forever. We are just passing through so all the problems that we are facing right now in our experience are temporary as well. We are not here to stay in this experience forever. So that's why Christ promised, he says, I am going to prepare a place.
place for you. He's going to prepare a place. And, and he's now given us a glimpse as to what heaven will be like, brothers and sisters. And, 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 and it's not about the physical aspect that we should be stressing about right now, you know. It is the emphasis of the experience, what the experience will be like in the place he is preparing for us. A place where there is peace. A place where you don't even have to worry about anything. A place where the Bible says there will be no more crying, no more sickness. You don't have to pay a bill. You all don't want that experience? But it comes with a condition. It was paid for by Christ. It was, a, it was a very, 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 very heavy price that he paid. He paid his life for it. For us to receive that, 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 that experience. So the comfort of the verse is not having, not looking forward to the mansion over the hill, brothers and sisters. But that this dwelling place is where our father's house is and where he dwells. I should have heard a loud amen for that. But, brothers and sisters, it is not about where we are going. It is about who we are going to be with. And that is, that's, that is what is important here. We are going to be with Jesus. And that is something we all should be looking forward to. Because of the promises that he has made for us, brothers and sisters. Revelation 21 describes this new Jerusalem that is coming down. It has the glory of God and, 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 and it gives, uh, it paints heaven as um, a crystal clear jasper stone. Anybody has held jasper? Anybody has jasper on them right now? Any stones or anything? I see a pearl. It, has, it is probably as beautiful as that. But it is a beautiful place that he is preparing for us. But more importantly, he's preparing an experience for us, which all of us will enjoy and from which we all will benefit. And the Bible paints the picture of heaven. The Bible says that the walls themselves are jasper and the city and its streets are like pure as gold and clear as glass and the 12 gates the bible says 12 gates are made from each one single pearl each one or one single pearl each the comfort of heaven brothers and sisters as i said will not be the wonder of its size or the richness or the quality of the decoration of heaven the focus of heaven will be the fact that it is the house of God and it is where God dwells we will be in his presence and Paul would have alluded to that he said to be absent from the body is to be in the presence of God he wasn't focused about about the place you know he was focused on who he was going to be with. The person who died for him. The person who transformed his life. Almighty God he is referring to. And this is the person we should be looking forward to meet. And so like children, when we are in our father's house, we know for sure that in our father's house and let's come let's come back home to, to earth when you are in your father's house you know it is a place of safety you know that when you go into that house you are free to go in the fridge and eat anything that you want you could put on the TV you could do whatever you want because you know this is your father's house you are comfortable in his house 
And that is the message Christ is trying to, pro to portray for us. That when he's preparing this place for us, he knows that when we get there, he's preparing for us a place where we will feel comfortable. Where we are certain, brothers and sisters, that where, you know, we, we can feel at home in the presence of God. And we can't take comfort by the fact that God is preparing a dwelling place where we will be and where he will also be. And the final point we have to make here, brothers and sisters, we can take comfort by the fact that God is preparing a dwelling place where he will be with where he will be also and where you will see him but then he makes the final point Jesus strengthens the comfort of this promise of this comfort that he is coming again he is coming again and that's the in emphasis brothers and sisters that is a promise that is extended to all true Christians. It has been extended to the entire world. For those who believe, knows that Christ is coming again. And for those who are believers, it is a period we are looking forward to. Because we know who we believe in. And we are persuaded that he is able This coming again, it is a period that we are looking forward to, brothers and sisters. Because, he know that, because we know that when he comes again, we don't have to go through the experience that we are facing. Because Paul made the point, we are facing death all day long. We are facing death all day long. We will go through trials, suffering, and persecution. But from the time Christ comes, brothers and sisters, all of that will be over. Because the Bible says, in the twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed. The comfort that Paul brought to the grieving Thessalonian church concerning Christians, that, you know, that had already died was that all of them those who had already fallen asleep in jesus and those which were alive and remained the bible says will all be caught up together in the clouds to meet him in the air and thus we shall always be with the lord if you have been adopted into God's family by faith in Jesus Christ, then he is preparing a place for you. And he has promised that he will come again to take you there to be with him forever. That's his, com that's his promise. That's why he is coming. He is coming not only to judge the world, but he's coming to gather all the saints together to be with him. I don't know who doesn't want to be with Christ. I'm, 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 I'm sorry for you because outside of Christ, there is only death and condemnation and damnation. But in Christ, there is life. There is eternal life that is waiting. There is a reward, a crown of righteousness that is waiting for all of us. So he has promised that he will come again. He has promised that he has prepared a place for us. He has promised or he has given us comfort that if you believe in him and if you believe in the Father, that you have nothing to worry about. The Bible says, cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. My prayer and hope for the family is that you take comfort by these short words, knowing that one day your own troubles will be no more. And we have that assurance that our troubles 
are a light and momentarily passing, as what scripture reminds us. I leave you with this passage from 1 Corinthians chapter 4, from verses 16 to 17. Paul says, therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day, for our light and momentarily troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory, he says, that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes, he said, not on what is seen, but what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Stand with me this afternoon as we pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, O Lord, for these assurances that you have given us, the messages of hope, dear Father, that will keep our minds stayed in, on you, dear Father. We thank you for giving us the three points of promises, or the three promises of comfort, dear Father as to why we should remain comfortable in you, our belief in you, dear Father, and that the fact that you are going to prepare a place, and the fact that you are coming again are reasons why we should be comforted there, Lord. Father, Lord, I pray this afternoon for the family that you will continue to give them strengths, as they grieve, as they mourn, as they reflect, as they remember. Father Lord, I pray that you will strengthen them in the days and years to come. Knowing their Father, that all will be well with them. Father Lord, I pray that your presence, their Father, will fill the void that has been left by Graham. I ask there, Jesus, that you will stand on the side of all those who have gathered here. You know each one by name and by nature. And I pray that in the name of Jesus, their Father, that you will address each need according to your riches in glory. Father, Lord, bless each and every one this afternoon. We thank you for what you are about to do. We ask that your grace, dear Father, and your peace, which is sufficient, may it rest and abide with us all. These things I ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As the recessional prepares to leave the sanctuary, we'll sing, I'll fly away.
All right, you ready? You ready? Man that is born of woman has but a short time to live and is full of misery. He cometh up and is cut down like a flower. He fleeth as it were a shadow and never continueth in one stay. In the midst of life we are in death, of whom we may seek for succor, but of thee, O Lord, who for our sins art justly displeased? Thou knowest, Lord, the secrets of our hearts. Shut not thy merciful ears to our prayers, but spare us, Lord, most holy, O God, most mighty, O holy and merciful Saviour, thou most worthy judge eternal, suffer us not at our last hour for any pains of death to fall from thee. For as much as it hath pleased Almighty God in his wise providence to take out of this world the soul of our deceased brother, Graham Cranston Nurse, we therefore commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, looking for the general resurrection in the last day and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose second coming in glorious majesty to judge the world, the earth and the sea shall give up their dead and the corruptible bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed and made like unto his own glorious body according to the mighty working whereby he is able to subdue all things. And then I heard from a voice from heaven saying, Write unto me, From henceforth, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Even so, saith the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. Yeah, that's all right.
We'll sing the first song in the song sheet. When we all get to heaven, sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing out the be. When we all And can it be that I should gain an interest in the Saviour's blood? Died he for me who caused his pain, for me who him to death pursued. Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, shouldst die for me? Let us sing the song, And Can It Be.
the final hymn, It is well with my soul. It is well with my soul.
Shall we pray? Almighty God, with whom do live the spirits of those who depart hence in the Lord, and with whom the souls of the faithful, after they are delivered from the burden of the flesh, are in joy and felicity, we give thee hearty thanks for the good examples of all those thy servants who have finished their course in faith, do now rest from their labors. And we beseech thee that we, with all those who are departed in the true faith of thy holy name, may have our perfect consummation and bliss, both in body and soul, in thy eternal and everlasting glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Graham Cranston Nurse, rest in peace.